If the Federal gunship is the ship that you use to take your frustrations out on the galaxy, and the Fer de Lance is a ship built for the professional bounty hunter to swiftly deal with a contract, this is the ship you use to fight in a war, or rather it's the ship that the Federation had used to settle their disagreements. For those times that the Federal gunship isn't enough and the Farragut-class battlecruiser is considered overkill. It's also a ship for the independent commander who wants to be able to make a statement. A statement that they're not here to mess around and that they're here to take what they believe is rightfully theirs either for the Federation or themselves, whether it's actually rightly theirs or not. This is the ship for you use to slap down any hint of disturbance in a given system by providing the troublemakers a simple choice to either conform or be turned into giblets. This ship is the Federal Corvette, and there is absolutely nothing about the looks of this ship that says, hey there, we come in peace. Alrighty, propaganda piece out the way, it's not like the Federation are paying me for this. Moving on. The Corvette is another ship made and designed by Core Dynamics and released in 3301 for the Federation. Core Dynamics have always had a talent for making either excellent looking ships or some of the ugliest ships in the galaxy with nothing in between. And I'm pleased to announce that Core Dynamics have managed to continue this trend because somehow they've managed to make the Corvette look fantastic. Even if it's not pretty in the traditional sense, it grows on you. It grows on you because you know that every nut and bolt on this ship is designed with a purpose. This isn't a ship where the manufacturer added aerodynamics pointlessly to fly in the vacuum space in the name of looking cool. This is the ship that manages to look good without any of that. This is a ship that tells you what it is right off the bat by looking menacing and then grows on you as you realise that this isn't your standard core dynamics brick. They've actually thought about this and they've managed to make it look angry and purposeful at the same time. Shortly after the Federal Corvette was released, it wasn't uncommon to see fleets made up of them in response to the London Treaty, which restricted the number of capital ships that the Federation, Empire and Alliance could have. But this treaty only lasted until 3302 when it was dissolved and then the Federation started to make and field more Farragut-class battlecruisers although the Corvette still remains an important part of the Federal Fleet. It's a big ship too. At 167 metres long, you can easily get over five Vipers nose to tail in the same space. In fact, it's the third biggest non-capital sized ship available to the regular commander, with only the Beluga and Cutter being larger. And both of those ships are designed to compensate for a tiny... ego, at least visually. But speaking of compensating, the Corvette has its own way to show off. It's the only ship that's available to the masses with two huge hardpoints, meaning that if someone tells you your Corvette is a method for compensating for something, then you can ensure they never say that again, because they'll need to compensate for the lack of a ship, and the lack of a body that hasn't been reduced to an atomized cloud floating around in space to never insult anyone ever again. If your only previous ventures into the world of large ships has been restricted to the Anaconda or the Type 9, you'd, you'd be forgiven for thinking that the Corvette will handle like a geriatric sloth with a Jägermeister derived hangover, but you'd be wrong. Somehow Core Dynamics managed to make the Corvette handle like a peach for its size and class. It sports a better pitch rate than the Mamba and a better roll rate than the Type 7 Transporter. Actually it has a better pitch rate than the Type 7 too and both the Type 7 and the Mamba are medium ships. Either the Corvette is excellent for its size, or the Type 7 especially is just broken. Actually, I need to think about that. I'll get back to you on it one day. So it's got big guns, and it handles well for what it is. It's also got excellent armor and shielding to shrug off incoming fire, space for a double fighter bay, and a plethora of hard points in addition to the two huge ones. To be exact, two small, two medium, and one large. It sounds like a ship with no possible drawbacks, right? Mmm, no. The FSD is under spec to say the least. The FSD is the same size of that which you'd find in an Anaconda. 
but whilst the Anaconda has a base mass of 400 tonnes, the Corvette tips the scales at over double that, coming in at over 900 tonnes. With this comes a truly atrocious jump range, lower than what you'd find on a Vulture for example. You can spec the ship and engineer it to get something that's a bit more usable, but obviously that will have to come with sacrifices elsewhere. One benefit of its mass though is that you're unlikely to be mass locked. The only things that can do it are the Imperial Cutter, Type 10 Defender, and some Thargoids. If a fight breaks out on the other side of the bubble, you're not going to be a first responder. If you're lucky, you'll arrive in the thick of the fight, but if not, the fight will be over and the victors will be enjoying cigars and whiskey at the nearest bar. Either way, you won't be there for the start unless you have an alternate means to get there quickly. This also means it's not an ideal explorer unless you're happy with short hops between systems, which is, don't get me wrong, good for being thorough, but if you've got a particular area you want to explore, you're going to be in for a long ride. With all that said though, if you want to break from the fighting, the Corvette is usable for trading in a local area. With a potential hold of over 600 tonnes, you can make short work of keeping everyone supplied, and it's the same for mining, if you keep it fairly local, the Corvette is more than capable. Just don't expect to be doing rare goods trading very quickly anytime soon. As far as other disadvantages go, as a Federation ship, you'll need to swear fealty to the Federation like you've never done before. You'll need to gain the rank of Rear Admiral with them in order to purchase your very own Corvette, and whilst the lower ranks progress pretty quickly, the further you advance, the longer it seems to take to get there. But it is worth it. At least it was for me. Speaking of being worth it, it is also eye-wateringly expensive to buy an upgrade. The base ship is nearly 190 million credits and A-rating the internals is also extremely expensive. Plus the base insurance is around 9 million credits and that's before you add anything to it. You really, really want to make sure you can afford a rebuy before dropping the credits and taking it out for a spin. It also takes forever to make the perfect build, at least in my experience. Mine has had its hard points and utility swapped out more times than I can remember and it's still not perfect. Because with this ship comes the expectation that you should be able to slay your enemy just by looking at them, but in reality that's not always the case. Despite the handling, you can be outmaneuvered and outrun, so you'll need to make sure that whenever possible your first strike is the only strike. Either that, or you'll need an experienced fighter pilot or two to deal with the sneakier opponent. Because in case you hadn't guessed, the Corvette isn't a fast ship. Yes, it's very controllable for its size, but it's not exactly going to catch up with a well-specced FDL or Viper, unless they have their engine shot out, while sitting still, with the pilot asleep. In terms of rivals for pure combat, it's not to say that there aren't any. The Anaconda, Cutter and Type 10 Defender are the obvious contenders, and they're all capable in their own way, but nothing else gives both barrels, both figuratively with the two-finger salute, and literally with those two huge hardpoints and the Federal Corvette. If you made it this far, thank you so much for being here. I hope you've enjoyed it, and given the time of year I'm releasing this, I hope you have a fantastic new year. Enjoy whatever it is that you do, and I'll see you all real soon. Much love, Anno7. Thank you.